Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin. We are back with a Q&A episode on the ATEM television studio. And I've been getting a lot of questions uh, from folks about the review that I did a few weeks ago. Uh, most of them around video output, but I'm also going to talk about the Strata app and how to set that up on your iPad or iPhone. So we're gonna spend the bulk of this time though talking about uh, the video output choices that you have with the ATEM. Now the simplest way to get video out of the device is through a USB cable and I should add that this thing does not really do any kind of streaming out of the box. You're gonna to need to get uh, additional hardware to do that, which I will show you in a minute. Um, but really the simplest way to record video is to take this uh, USB cable, and let me just get my iPad oriented properly here, take this USB cable and plug it into your USB port on your Mac, and then uh, you load up the Blackmagic Media Express software, and this all comes with the, uh, the television studio when you get it. Uh, and basically what will happen is, is it'll detect that you have uh, the device installed here. So let me switch to camera three for a second so you can see what I'm seeing. Uh, and you can go up here to device and just select your ATEM television studio if it's plugged in properly. And you go over to log and capture and in a moment or two, uh, it pops up with uh, what you're looking at. We got kind of an infinite loop there. So we'll just switch off of that view and you can kind of see what, uh, what you get. You can make sure that your audio is working properly. It's, uh, it's really kind of neat. Now, the thing is, is that when you are plugged in with USB, uh, you can only record H.264. And for most of the uses that uh, you might use in a small environment, like, like I have here in my home studio or maybe a house of worship or something where you know, you're not producing a broadcast quality necessarily uh, function. You're certainly gonna get a really nice HD file for YouTube and that kind of thing. Uh, you know, shooting compressed is fine. You'll lose a little bit of quality if you go in and edit because you're going to you know, edit and then recompress, but um, you're not gonna be all that worse for wear with that. Uh, there is some overhead in that if you do record an H.264 and you bring it over uh, to a video editing application like Final Cut Pro, it'll often convert that video file to a different format, uh, which takes up some disk space and maybe slows things down for a little bit while that render is happening. And certainly on larger files, that will make a larger difference. But uh, it's really pretty simple just to plug in that USB and start recording. But it is important to note that the only application that can get video via USB from the ATEM Studio at the moment is the Blackmagic Media Express software. So you can't plug it into Final Cut Pro directly. You can't use it to stream anything. It is strictly going uh, from here into the application that uh, supports it. So uh, you know, if you think you're gonna get this thing out of the box and start streaming with it, it's not gonna happen. You can certainly with a computer, Windows or Mac, start recording directly over USB uh, in that compressed H.264 format format and the video quality looks uh, pretty nice. So it's really, really not losing anything. Now, if you want higher quality and you want to record maybe uncompressed or uh, in a native format that your editor might use, like for example, uh, uh, ProRes 422, which is what uh, Final Cut likes to use, uh, then you might want to consider this, which is a, uh, there's a lot of other options too, but this is the Blackmagic uh, HyperDeck Shuttle 2, I believe it's called. And what this does is it records onto solid state disk. I did a really extensive review on this thing already, so uh, you can check that out. But uh, basically what this does is it uh, takes the video from the program output on the ATM, ATM uh, studio. So you have an HDMI output on there and that essentially uh, allows you to dump the raw video right into this thing, which is really handy. So um, I'm rebooting the Strata app for like the 12th time since I started recording uh, videos tonight. And that's one of the things we're gonna talk about when we get to uh, that application. But now we're back up and running, so we will continue onward. Now, another option that you have is to add another piece of hardware to do some streaming. So. Uh, you can, um, again, record onto the solid state disk like I'm doing, uh, but if you want to stream, uh, you have to get something that will take HDMI and convert it into like a Thunderbolt uh, data stream or, or a USB data stream. And uh, the product that I really like for that is another Blackmagic product, which is the Intensity Extreme. Uh, you can also look at the Ultra Studio Mini Recorder, which is another thing that'll work. And basically what you do uh, is you take HDMI and it'll output that HDMI via Thunderbolt. And I've got reviews of all these products on my channel, so you can check them out. I've purchased them and have been using them quite extensively, but um, you could record with the Media Express software with this device, just the same, except if you're using the Intensity Extreme, you can record in uncompressed formats or uh, in ProRes 422 on the Mac. So you have a few more options for that. Now, what you also get the ability to do with this is stream. And I've done some YouTube live streaming with it as well. 
uh, and I'm able to do that using uh, the Wirecast for YouTube software. So uh, these things are compatible with a lot of streaming applications. Flash Media Encoder is another one. Uh, and sometimes you can even coerce it to work with Google Hangouts and that kind of thing as well. So uh, this kind of shows up as a standard web camera and you can start using it that way. However, just like when you plug in the ATEM directly into the Mac, uh, it will not record the Final Cut Pro. So you can record it in Blackmagic Media Express and then run that file that gets created over to your editing application if you uh, want to use it that way. So that is basically how you get the video out of it. And I would say, again, if you're going to record and you're not really looking for you know, high-end stuff here, you're just trying to get the video out of the thing, uh, use the USB and record the Blackmagic Media Express, although my preference is the HyperDeck Shuttle. It's about 300 bucks for the recorder, and you'll need another 200 or so for the solid-state disk that goes in it, uh, but I think it's, uh, it's certainly worth it. Now, the other question I got uh, was how to use the, uh, the, or at least set up that Strata uh, switching uh, software so you can use your iPad or iPhone as a control surface, and we're going to demonstrate that real quick. So here it is running on my iPad at the moment, and uh, it looks a lot like the, uh, the, what you would see on the computer version of the ATEM control panel. I've got uh, the ability to use the fader controls and all that kind of stuff, and I have the same camera up here, so let's try that again. Uh, and you can do some really cool stuff with it. The problem is that it crashes constantly. I, I found if you reboot the iPad before you start using it, it's a little bit more reliable, but um, just be prepared that during your live show you might have a lot of crashes with it. For me, it's good enough, but it's sometimes annoying. As you saw, I kept trying to hit the button to get the thing to respond. I had to manually close out the app uh, in order to make it work. But uh, to configure it, though, uh, you have to get your ATEM Television Studios Ethernet onto the same network that your iPad's wireless is on because you're going to connect via you know, its IP address to get it to work. So uh, if we pull mine up here, let me go back to camera two here real quick. Um, I just pulled up the settings before I was ready to do that. Camera two here real quick. If I click on the settings here, um, you can't really see it, but I type in the IP address right in here, and that's how I connect to it. And I have my uh, ATEM connected via Ethernet to my uh, network, my home network. So what's happening is my iPad is connecting to the Wi-Fi access point, and then we're off and running. Now, if you don't know what your IP address is of your ATEM, you can load up the uh, setup utility. So let's switch back to our Mac here, and we're going to uh, load up that uh, setup utility here. Let me just find it real quick. Uh, ATEM setup utility. And what will happen is if you have your uh, USB plugged in at the time, uh, it will tell you what the IP address is. Uh, and if that is not the network your Wi-Fi is on, then you'll need to uh, configure it uh, manually to uh, what you got. So I got a 192.168.0 uh, network here, and if I just, you know, just add it to that, uh, the uh, Strata app uh, will connect to it once you type in the IP address there directly. And it couldn't be simpler than that. So uh, to the person that wrote in uh, with that question, there's your answer, and just uh, go ahead and uh, load, up, load up that setup utility, find the IP address, and you're off and running. I got to say that this ATEM Television Studio is really, uh, for, for small productions, you know, even like something to cable access level, it's really, really useful and very inexpensive at under $1,000, and it's been wonderful. So if you're considering, uh, you know, if you're looking for something to do a little bit, you know, stepping up your game as, as far as production goes, this thing is really going to do it, and you're not going to break the bank. Uh, and it's once you get it configured and working properly, uh, it is very, very, very useful. Just make sure that you got to really plan out uh, the kinds of things that you want to do. So if you're planning to do streaming, then you'll want to get the Intensity Extreme uh, or the HyperDeck uh, or the Hyper Ultra Studio Mini Recorder. Uh, if you want to do some recording, you can use your computer or uh, the thing flat out of the box. So that'll do it for this Q&A episode. You know, I really don't mind getting email from everyone, but uh, if you do have questions about products I'm reviewing, it's often a lot more uh, helpful to the rest of the community to leave a comment on the YouTube video. I get an email every time somebody leaves a comment, so good or bad, I see it. And I, I try to respond to as much as I can, but I really like to respond inside the YouTube channel because uh, it gives the ability for everyone else to see the answer as well. But if you have something private or something you don't want to share with the rest of the world, see, certainly by all means send me an email. But uh, it's great to just uh, respond to me in the comment field because then we, we can have a discussion about it. And hopefully soon we'll have uh, improved commenting on YouTube so we can really have some, some great uh, threaded discussions about uh, different ways we're using the products that I've reviewed on my channel. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.